So, hey guys, today we are talking about Therion, and honestly, we're just going to be talking about Therion Pier, and Therion Pier is honestly pretty damn trash. So, we'll go over it. So, one of the best cards we have with Therion King Rig is uh, Therion King Regulus in, in Therion. So, um, we can only use each of the following effects of Therion King Regulus once per turn, and essentially all Therions have the, this kind of effect. So you can target one Therion monster or one uh, same type uh, monster in your graveyard. So in this case, Regulus is a machine, so it's a machine. Lily Berea is a plant, so we, we can target a Therion or a plant. And we, we uh, special summon this card from our hand, and then equip that monster to this card in that order. So if you were to do a Called by the Grave or a DD Crow, on uh, whatever monster we're targeting, the special summon will still resolve because this happens first, and chains resolve as much as possible. So, for example, uh, with Nibiru, I, I'm pretty sure if no monsters are on the field, I, I don't think Nibiru can summon itself, can it? Probably not, right? But if we did a board wipe and then Nibiru in that order, then Nibiru would still uh, summon, but I don't think a token is summoned. Is it? I would actually need to check, actually. Uh, but let's check. Do 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 do. During the main phase, if this has happened, you can tribute as many face of monsters on the field as possible, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. Then special summon one primal being token to your opponent's field. So this is technically not going to be possible for you to attribute any face-up monsters on the field. So does this mean Nibiru can't be summoned if there are no monsters on the field? Oh, so it's not just the token. I, I think the rock can't be summoned at all. And then you summon to your opponent's field a token. And this is based on the attack and defense of the attributed monsters, which there would have had to be yeah so it always summons the token more or less whenever the nibiru is summoned so uh ruling but uh, okay anyways if we were to w better example like, let's say you activate polymerization and i like pop your fallen of elbaz you still have to make something if you can make something because the, the effect has to resolve but all right uh, Therian King Regulus has the effect to uh, be an Omni Negate, essentially, but this Negate just sucks ass, like, uh, just straight up. So, alright, when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can send one Therian Monster card from your hand or face of field to the graveyard to negate that effect. So, double whammy. Why is this effect so bad? So, first off, we need to send a Therian Monster card from your hand or face of field to the graveyard. Alright, what, what if you don't have access to the graveyard? So perhaps Shifter, Macro, or Fissure. So, uh, yeah. Y you can't send for cost to the, the graveyard anything. So, fair for, you have no negate. I, pain. I, caramba. I guess. So, if we look at what we have for removal, at least you can technically use Therian Bolt Ein to remove, I guess, like a, what we'll say, We'll just assume a macro and this effect discards for cost as well right yeah so that that's not going to happen so we can blind effect destroy a therian card we control and one card your opponent controls destroy them but how do we summon blind we need a therian monster or one warrior monster in our graveyard that no longer exists because everything just gets banished so how do we summon blind you, you don't and you know what this by itself would be fine because then uh, yeah, you know, we have a pretty clear and obvious weakness in Therion, you know, it's just not good against like macro type things, banish effects, whatever, uh, we're not going to do too well into those, and that would be fine, but then you, you realize the, the other part of this effect, well, why it's bad, negate that effect, we don't negate activation, we negate effect, why is this bad? Well, I'll tell you why. Alright, so l let's assume this happens. Uh, we activate the effect of dimensional fissure. 
Okay, so if we have Therian King Regulus versus Dimensional Fissure or Skill Drain or like any continuous floodgate card, uh, explain to me uh, what I can do with Therion King Regulus. For the most part, nothing. The, the only thing that we can do is we, we can um, somewhat play under like certain cards. Uh, let's see, what, what was the card we can play around? Hmm. Thinking? Not much, really. So, well, one of the things, I guess, worth mentioning, uh, another thing, just about more so relating to the first effect. You can target one Therian monster or one machine monster in your graveyard, so I shall summon this card from your hand if you do equip that monster to this card. So, if a monster equips a card to itself, so specifically a monster card and not like an equip spell, like for example with the Makanko cards, uh, the, the Therian cards work a bit differently because we specifically have monsters equipped to monsters. If we are negated, like our Therian cards are negated at all, it immediately force unequips any uh, monster that is equipped to our Therian cards, which is annoying because our equipped Therian cards have their effects, Well, but they are given to the equip card, meaning we wouldn't be able to activate them anyways. And all we're losing is mainly attack after our uh, guys get negated, so that's annoying. And uh, this means that, I don't know, let's say we have Therian Reaper, uh, Foom, Therian King Regulus, and Therian Irregular. Let's assume we just have these three. Uh, if our opponent imperms this, we have to immediately get rid of, like, one of the two here. So we have to, like, Regulus effect target this or this if uh, we're um, affected by like an imperm. I mean, on the bright side though, these guys are all different types, so we're really okay under Tikaboo. And that, that that's about it, I guess. But all right, moving on. What else do we have that's fairly annoying? Hmm. Well, back to like Fissure for a second though. Uh, Therian King Regulus versus Fissure. I activate Fissure. If you negate, uh, with, try to negate with Therian King Regulus, it does actually nothing, but technically you are able to do so. Legal activation. And then with Fissure, let's assume we have like a couple of Therian cards and we have Foom. We can't even do like Foom effect, return Fissure, and then activate Therian King Regulus's effect to, um, uh, n negate something. We can't do that because, you know, since we're cost. So our opponent, like, if we were to try to boom, return this to the hand, they'll just activate it again at their leisure. So that that's not, not really great. But, uh, all right. I'm going a little bit further. Uh, another thing that sucks about the Therians is that they're not purely level 8. I mean, you can somewhat use them to make rank 8s, right? But the, their ability to make rank 8's, not, not that great. The only reason you would do so is like when you run out of effects to activate essentially. So like, let's say I activated the Lily Brea effect, Therian King Regulus effect, and then I don't really have much to do with them, or maybe I want to get them off the field for whatever reason, so we make like a rank 8, and then we, we can like summon like a Duke Yule or something, attaching Regulus to it. And then we can do something with a rank 8. Like, so something like that, I guess. So maybe we need to remove something and it's really important to do so. So we just immediately go into like a Dingyusu, link off the Dingyusu. And then we can make SP. And that'll be like some extra removal we can tap into. But can, can we like realistically very consistently make two rank 8s in a turn? No, no, no we cannot. So, yeah, that's pretty miserable. And in fact, yeah, we we just have, like, un just enough guys to make two rank aids. And that would require a very insane specific hand, so that's a thing. 
And then, um, yeah, let, let's focus on one of the main points of why Therion is bad. So we'll just do a quick pure Therion build. So three copies of Charge, three copies of Endless Engine. We'll go however many copies of these guys, it won't really matter. Uh, one copy of this, and then we'll go however many copies of this. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we'll, we'll just grab every guy, I guess. Sure. And then we'll grab... Ash Blossom. Uh, Imperm Called By, whatever. And this is going to be just here, Therion, with a couple of generic cards added in. So I don't know, let's, let's throw in like three copies of Dark Hole or something. That doesn't super matter. I guess that this would be better off being like effect failures or something, but not that important. So. If we do a quick hand test, you, you might notice a, an issue. Uh, oh, look, we have four engine cards. But, problem. H how do we play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? So all of these guys require a Therion to be in the graveyard to special summon themselves. So in this case, uh, yeah, we, we would need something like if Bolion were in the graveyard, we have somewhat combo, right? And we can do quite a lot. So, for example, if we just had this Bolion in the graveyard, Lily Brea can send the Bolion after it equips the Bolion onto itself, sending that to grab, I guess, um, Therian Cross, and that would be fine. And we can also have Therian Disc Calcium, in this case, I think, to add... I guess it could be either Regulus or... Boom, D doesn't like super matter. And then we can go into like uh, Gigantic Champion Sargus with Empress Alasia and Lily Berea. And then we can go into this to grab like the Therian King Regulus. And then um, in this case though, I think we might go Boom first and then link off for some kind of link too and then go Regulus equipping the Foom for a uh, max amount of negates here. But I mean, since we've Ash Blossom Joe Spring to normal summon, uh, if we started with Foom, we could make Baron first. So, uh, special Foom, uh, equipping Ayn, normal summon Ash Blossom using the level 7 Foom plus uh, Ash Blossom Joe Spring to make Baron, and then we can do everything uh, that, that I just said uh, after. And we end up with like the trap, the field spell, Baron, and Regulus, which is just respectable, I guess. And also, I guess, Foom effect. So it's like something like, was it like four or five interactions? Plus, like, whatever link to you made. So maybe it's like an IP or something, which can go like IP into SP. So, like, what, six, seven interactions or something? But, all right. Uh,. Moving along. If we have a hand like this, so this hand, we have Endless Engine or Gyro System. So th this is essentially one of the six in archetype cards we can have, like if we're capping out on them. Six in archetype cards that can actually get our Therions into the graveyard. Uh, this one could be Ashed. So if you Ash Endless Engine or Gyro System, I have no other ways to get anything into the graveyard here. So I am uh, completely cooked same issue as before and these are all like useless bricks that do completely nothing and th yeah that, that's a pretty big issue with therion so here we have just the charge so i guess we would charge discard this and then draw two and it's nothing because we, we don't have a therion card in our graveyard uh what we can do i guess is we can use endless engine our gear system to return the Therion charge and add this back mm -hmm. to our hand, which th doesn't help us a lot. One of the crummy plays we can do, I guess, is Endless Engine's uh, Arcura system to send like the Therion Discoliseum, and then like the next turn, add the Therion Discoliseum back to our hand with the effect of the Arcura system, and then we can maybe send this into the graveyard with the Therion Discoliseum. Like, kind of situational, but pretty painful. Here, another hand that d does nothing, right? Cool. A lot of hands that do nothing. Uh, th this one's actually, like, kinda okay. 
I'd argue not that, like, good, but all right. Sure does things. So we can put the Lily Borea, try to draw two. Uh, we drew, like, a called by at least. The Alasia's not that great, but yeah. Th there's also the fact that, we yeah, that we, we don't have, like, any extension plays because, you know, there are no Ethereum extra deck monsters. I mean, the closest thing we have is, like, Gigantic Champion Sargus, but... Uh, as I said before, like, making two rank 8's not really doable. So let's assume there was a rank 8. Like, it, it doesn't matter if there is or isn't. Uh, let, let's just assume there is a rank 8 that we have that's maybe, like, one interaction. That's quick effect that detaches, right? Uh, Gigantic Champion Sargus could then trigger, right? If we had that, but... We can't make both of these guys on the same turn, reasonably. So, we have, like, one, two, three four guys total for uh, eights so that's insanely awkward and if we were to do a trade-in like with their in charge uh, this feels pretty bad if this gets ashed and then of course this feels bad if it gets ashed so essentially you're a deck that lives and dies to ash if we're just looking at peer anyways so yeah pretty awkward and then next a lot of these guys actually have trash effects. So, Regulus probably seem good, right? Well, that, that's because Regulus is good, but are the other guys good? No, not really. So, Therian Bull Ein still has niche usages here and there. But th this is an ignition effect to destroy. So, it's a board breaker essentially. It's not like an inward piece, so kind of trash in its own guy way. Therian Reaper Fume. Kind of also trash in a whole different way. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you entire one Therian card in your spell and trap zone, and one card your opponent controls return them to the hand. So if we just have an aqua monster, like, I don't know, let's say we have Tailament's Sharon uh, equipped onto our Therian Reaper Fume. This seriously does nothing. It's just a 2.5k defense guy that is level 7, which is a fairly awkward level. So that sucks. Therian Duke Yolt. While you control an equip card, there monsters you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. This is just like a 2.8k defense guy that cannot be destroyed by card effects. That, that, that's what this guy becomes. And this guy's effect is actually like kind of okay. It, it's moderate. And then we have Therion Lily Borea. Well, one of the two actually good Therions. So you can uh, send a card from your hand or field to the graveyard as cost so we could send like a field spell we don't need anymore and then we can add uh our copy of therion discoliseum and then that can grab us the regulus or we can have lily brea send itself and then we have like regulus equip lily brea and then we the, the world is our oyster i guess and then therion empress alasia th this is like the absolute worst card in the world I hate this card. Why do you exist? That, that's how I feel about Alasia. So, okay. You can target a Therian monster or one Reptile monster in your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, equip that monster to this card. And then the effect on this one is you can discard one card, then target one Therian monster card in your spelling trap zone. Special summon it. So. Uh, alright. If we're playing these cards without Therians and, and just in general, like, for the most part, without their ends. And just playing with, like, the, um, piping. So, if we were to play Alasia in a Reptile deck, th this is literally just a body. Th this is a level A guy. That, that That's it. Just... Stats are kind of mediocre as well. So, yeah, that sucks. And w when you're playing with, like, Therion's, Alasia's effect is also garbage. Discard one card, then target one Therion monster card in your spell and trap zone, special summon it. What? Like, do you think I'm just made of infinite cards? And also, wh why do I want to summon a guy if it's not, like, the only reason you would ever want to do this is if you were to, uh, want to, I guess, make, like, a rank 8 or something, and that is the only exact reason. Zero other reasons. So, I, I guess we can, like, Elegia effect here to a special summon, like, a Lily Berea back, and then make a rank 8, and that's it. But, uh, if we don't have a 
Therion card in our hand to discard for this effect, we'll have no Therion monsters in the graveyard. Potentially, right? So, assuming we just send Lily Brea off of this, and then we special summon this with Lil this Lily Brea that we equipped, right? If we have no more Therian cards, then if we add, like, uh, Therian Discolcium, doesn't do anything. If we add Therian Cross, doesn't do anything because we don't control Therian Monster anymore because we made some rank 8. So, yeah, just, just awful. If we're looking at in our type, and honestly, having to discard instead of, like, sending a guy, horrid. If we would send, like, a card from hand, like Lily Brea, this would actually be better. Just... Damn. Pain. And these guys, sending for cost instead of effect, also pain. But, alright. I guess Therian a regular is pretty neat. Being able to do, like, a full board wipe. So that, that that's kind of cool, and how Therion can interact like with both spells and spells, traps, and uh, monsters to some extent. That that's pretty cool, I guess. But uh, yeah, that that that's about where we're at. And Therion cards, the the engine itself, it's just so incredibly mid. Like, look, look at this unplayable hand. Uh, this hand barely playable. This hand. Unplayable if my opponent has Ash, but like technically playable. Unplayable. Uh, unplayable. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, unplayable. So, yeah, it's just like a pure archetype. Miserable, but of course you don't have to play it tier. But, or, or, I mean, I, I play it pure, but yeah, we're evaluating it as a uh, pure. So, synergistically wise, you, you do have like some synergies going so I can like use for example Bolline and then I can destroy the guy that's equipped onto Bolline I can equip that guy onto Lily Brea send the guy that I equipped onto Lily Brea summon the Therian King Regulus and then if I Regulus negate I can summon like Dukul from hand or something so yeah that's pretty great, and how they play around the field spell, I think, is pretty great. But everything else, it makes this deck just so overwhelmingly bad. And these guys, like, realistically, uh, I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, like, you're not going to be able to normal summon them, right? So you'll have to special summon them. But you also have to run enough of them to see them in your hand. So it's like, the, the most awkward situation of, damn, I just opened Therion's in my hand, I and, and I can't even play a single card. And that just becomes completely awful. Uh, of course, there's also the fact that, for, for the most part, like th there's just no decks that really have good synergy with Therion. So there, there's like one that I know of that has like insane synergy, and then everything else compared to that, I feel like not, not worth playing. So of course, you're going to be playing first off like a very minimal Therion package if you're playing this with uh, anything aside from Punk, because Punk has insane synergy with Therion. But if we're not looking at Punk, what, what do we have exactly? Well, uh, let's see. With the, uh, with the, I guess, Therion cards, what, what do we have to play with these? Well, what, when was the last time you, you guys saw Therion being played with something? Well, I think I know the two decks you, you probably saw playing them. It was probably either A, Super Heavy Samurai, or B, it was um, just Plant. And all Plant does essentially is uh, they search the Lily Berea and then they uh, have the Therion Discoliseum, adding the Therion King Regulus. And these are all like just random pretty much one ofs. Just to get the Therion King Regulus Omni Negate. This is incredibly lame because you're, you're not really doing anything with the Therian cards, you're just grabbing the Omni Negate. And this is just technically, I, I would even argue, a um, somewhat worse version of what um, what Super Heavy Samurai does, where you essentially just do a pen summon uh, 
with uh, with uh, Gleefort Genius in the extra monster zone, which then allows you to add Regulus to your hand and then just special summon Regulus, and, and you just put him on the field. So th this requires a lot less uh, main deck cards to run. So just the worst version of that is just essentially I want Darien King Regulus for the Omni Negate, and then you, you don't even touch like a single one of these other cards, bro. J just cut out like. 39 of the cards I have in this deck, and, and that's basically uh, what you got here. In terms of like the Therian package in Super Heavy Samurai, you can't even call it a package at this point. But, alright. Therion. You have nothing. You're essentially riddled with holes here, you know? We have a billion weaknesses and no strengths whatsoever, is how I feel about this. So, yeah. Pretty much just pain and suffering. The, the fact that your your whole deck crumbles to dimensional fissure is actually just crazy. Like, I, I can't negate the dimensional fissure because it does nothing. I can't remove the dimensional fissure because I, I have like no, nothing that can really remove it. I mean, like, on my opponent's turn anyways, and then my opponent can just stare down my Regulus and do whatever they want. And while we're at it, uh, if it was actually macro instead, that also turns off the, the, the field spell. So that's annoying. Uh, send one Therian card from your uh, card or one Endless Engine or Gear System from your deck to the graveyard instead, which is now impossible. So, can't do that. And also worth mentioning is this effect here. It, this exists when a monster is destroyed by Bell and sent to the graveyard. You can target one Therian monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So. Flawandry's monsters, like the small birds, they are never sent to the graveyard when uh, you do battle with them. So yeah, that that's another thing that really sucks about this randomly. Whatever we destroy has to be sent to the graveyard, but we're already in such disadvantage, like under like macro like effects. So why do we need like a third thing or a fourth thing? Yeah, this is like the fourth thing, honestly. No, fifth thing. Yeah. We have five different things affected by this. First, we need guys in the graveyard to be able to special summon. Secondly, this effect. So, effect one, two, three. Those are not activatable. And then, this is like issue number five. We, we can't do this effect. Not that we would necessarily want to do this under like a macro, which is pain. But, all right. I guess also worth mentioning is that this card's just worthless. Does nothing. Target one Therian monster in your graveyard, special summon, then you can equip one Therian monster from your hand or graveyard to it. You want me to have like two Therians in the graveyard for some reason? Cool. And then during the main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two Therian monsters, one on your field and one in your graveyard, equip that monster from your graveyard to the other monster you control. That effect uh, also kind of worthless because the Therian cards kind of do that on their own. So, yeah. Just in general, Therion, pain, but, oh right, we have this, Sprite Smasher, special summon a Therion monster for your graveyard, if you banish a Therion or Sprite card from your hand or graveyard, but you still need a Therion monster magically in your graveyard, like, I don't even care about the banish at this point, but if we're banishing, like, a Therion card, but wh why not just use the Therion card to equip that monster direct? Actually useless effect for Therion, so, great. Therion. Yeah, not that much going for this, but when we throw in Punk into the equation, it becomes a little bit better. So you have Malaya of the Trees and Diablantis, so Diablantis can send a Therian Lily Brea for you. So if you have a Therian Lily Brea equipped onto any Therion, that can get you into Regulus. And this just requires essentially any Therion monster to be in your hand, doesn't matter which one. But I, I mean, my favorite one is going to be Foom, because then we can make Baron with the punk cards, and then also have the Therian King Regulus, and that, that that's pretty swell. But, yeah. In terms of pain and suffering, very high in, in this regard, because a, a lot of these Therian cards, you want to see them, but you don't want to see too many of them, and also they're, they're kind of like bricks at the same time. Wow, isn't that painful? Let's do another test hand. While we're here, why not? Yeah, that's not playable. That's also not playable, is it? Well, I mean... 
It is playable if our opponent doesn't have Ash Blossom, Joe Spring, or DD Crow. Speaking of which, uh, I, I did say that if we like activate our Therion effects, um, our opponent, uh, if they were to chain like a Banish card to our Therion Special Summoning, that doesn't work. But we can't activate our Therion card if you were to banish the the card first. So if you were to Crow or just called by simply before uh, we um, can Special Summon our guys, like be because th this is an ignition effect to summon. Uh, if you were to do a quick effect banish in the graveyard or like use a shuffler yeah these guys aren't summonable anymore they're actually just bricks rotting in the hand kind of forgot to mention that part but yeah it's just extreme amounts of pain and suffering whoa great and we don't even have a way like even though it would be trash like uh this can't special summon a Therian monster. Well, this one can special summon a Therian monster, right? Can it? No. It requires a Therian monster to be in your graveyard first, and then you can uh, equip one Therian monster from your hand or graveyard to it. It doesn't special summon from the hand. Uh, yeah. That doesn't special summon from the hand. This doesn't either. And this would be, like, vaguely, like, a little bit useful if you were able to use something that special summoned a Therion. But even then, like, if I were to special summon, like, a Therion Duke Yul, and, and just the Duke Yul to my board, like, straight up, I can't even get this off the field anyway, so... Kind of moot point to, to do that. Yeah, so it, I guess it really doesn't matter. Like, if, if I summon anything aside from Lonely Brea, I don't think it can actually get itself off the field, like, turn one, so... Yeah. Therion sucking major ass. I don't know. What, what, what kind of Therion support would you need? To actually make this playable or like what kind of archetype would you need uh to get released to make this like playable with it like a plant machine archetype perhaps like maybe i guess or something that can just make the Atlantis kind of for free as part of its combo line to set up the lily brea i guess which i, I can think of none great I guess you could technically try, like, Centurion, but... Conflicting interests with the field spells. Yeah. Not really great, huh? So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. And I'll, uh, see you guys in the next video, where hopefully I won't have to suffer about thinking about Therion, but just in general. Outside of Punk, I don't think anything plays that well with just pure Therion unfortunately so uh yeah that's all i got for you guys today and i'll see you guys in the next video uh, bye